In this video, we are going to talk about some apparatus used in acid alkaline titrations. We are going to talk about what are these, what are their functions, as well as how do we use them. The first apparatus is a conical flask. A conical flask is called because it has a cone shape. The function of a conical flask is to hold the analyte of the titration. The reason why we use a conical flask is because we can do a swirling motion using a conical flask. Swirling allows the analyte and the titrant to mix to each other well during the titrations. Notice that we usually put the conical flask on top of a white tile for us to have a better observation of the color change, especially during end point. The second apparatus I'm going to talk about is a pipette. Now a pipette is used to accurately measure a certain volume of solutions. In this case, this pipette is a 25 ml pipette, which can be used to measure accurately 25 ml of solutions. Now to use a pipette, not only we have this glass tubing, but we also need a pipette filler. Let's take a closer look at this pipette filler. Now this pipette filler has a bulb and two arrows button, two arrow buttons. So the upward arrow, when we press it, it can suck up the solution to the pipette. This arrow down button, if we press this button, it will release the solution out from the pipette. Before we use it, first we will squeeze the bulb and then we are going to connect the pipette to the pipette filler. Make sure they are tightly connected. So after we have connected the pipette, next step we have to pour out a solution. Let's just say I want to measure out 25 ml of HCl. So first of all, I need to find myself a clean beaker and then First of all, I'm going to pour just a little bit of HCl and then I'm going to gently swallow it to rinse the beaker. We pour away the washing. So this is to remove all the dirty things inside the beaker before we do the transfer of solutions. Now we can pour some amount of HCl into the beaker. And then I'm going to use my right hand to hold the upper part of the pipette like this. Now make sure I have my thumb and my index finger available to press the buttons of the pipette filler. Now next up, we are going to put my pipette into the solution and then I'm going to press the up button. And by doing this, I'm sucking up the solution to the pipette. Take a closer look at the upper part of the pipette. Now, Notice that the solutions is now reaching this level and then you also notice there is a line and this line is called graduation mark. Our objective is to lower this water level so that the bottom of this meniscus will just touching the graduation mark. To do this, we are going to gently press the arrow down button of the pipette filler so that we can lower the liquid level. Now make sure you watch the graduation mark horizontally. Now at this point, you should see that the bottom of the meniscus just touching the graduation mark. And this is how we measure out 25 cm cubes of solutions. Now after we have obtained 25 ml of solution, we can transfer into a clean conical flask simply by pressing the downward button. Now notice that after you have transferred all the liquids from the pipette to the conical flask, make sure you either touch the tip of the pipette on the bottom of the container like this or you dip the tip of the pipette onto the water surface. 
This is to transfer the final drops of liquid that has been stuck on the tip of the pipette. Otherwise, the measurement will not be accurate. The third apparatus I'm going to talk about is this burette. Now, a burette is used to hold a standard solution or the titrant of the titration experiment. Let's look at the burette. Now, you notice that the burette is affixed by the burette holder, which is on the iron stand. At the top of the burette, it is the part where we add the solution in. Notice that there, will, there are scales written on the body of the column. At the lower part of the burette, take a closer look. At the bottom part of the burette, you will see a valve where I can turn this part. Now at this position where it is perpendicular to the tube, perpendicular to the glass tubing, that means it is closed. When I turn it so that it is parallel to the glass tubing, it is on. So the solution can flow out from the nozzle. Now, this part is a knob which can use to adjust the tightness of the valve. So you can adjust it so that you can turn the valve easily, but it will not be too loosened. Now we will close the valve and then proceed to the next step. Now we are trying to fill this red with the titrant. Suppose we have to add HCl into the burette. First of all, we find ourselves a clean beaker. And then we will pour just a small amount of this acid. Again, we rinse it a little bit and then pour away the washings. Now we can add a certain amount of acid into the beaker. Now to pour the solution into the burette, make sure that you take the burette down from the clamp first before we add it. This is because if you simply pour it like this, you notice that the solution is above our eye level. So chances are, if the solution splash out, it may enter your eye and that will be very dangerous. That's why we always take this burette down below our eye level and then we add our solutions. Now to add our solutions, we can simply add it directly like this or if you're not confident enough, you can use a funnel to help you. You can add the funnel at the top and then you pour the solution. Make sure that the valve is closed. After you add the solution, make sure you take away the funnel. Because if you leave your funnel here, the liquid will drip down and it will affect the volume as seen from the scale. So make sure you take it off. Now before we use the burette directly for our titration experiment, we have to let out some of the solutions. The purpose of this is to, for one, fill up the lower part of the nozzle with liquid. Otherwise, you will have a wrong reading of the volume. The second reason is we try to let go of all the gas bubble trapped inside the burette. So after you have released some of the solution, you have to check if there is any gas bubble. So if there is any gas bubble here, you can try to tap this away or you can continue to release some of the solutions until there is no gas bubble down. Alright, so after you have filled up the upper part, the nozzle part, as well as get rid of all the gas bubbles, then before you do your titration experiment, make sure you have record your initial volume, the initial volume. So for example, now the initial volume is around 4.2, okay? 
Again, we are reading it horizontally, and then we are looking at the bottom of the meniscus. It is not necessary to start from zero. You can start from any point. So this is how we use a burette. The last apparatus I'm going to talk about is a volumetric flask. A volumetric flask has two functions. First of all, it is used to prepare a standard solution. And second function is, it is used for dilution. Now, this one is 250 ml. So if we try to do a 10 times dilution, we will add 25 ml of our target solution into the volumetric flask and then we top up with 225 ml so that it makes it 250 by doing this we will achieve a 10 times dilution let's see how we do it so first of all we are going to measure accurately 25 ml of our target solution using a pipette and then we just have to add it into our volumetric flask Again, after you release all the solution, make sure you dip the tip of the pipette on the liquid surface or onto the bottom of the container. And then we are going to top it up with distilled water. Now, at the beginning, you can simply open the cap of the water bottle and then just pour it in directly. But make sure you don't over pour, make sure that the liquid level is below the graduation mark of the red volumetric glass. Now notice that I have already filled it up almost to the graduation mark. At this point, we will use a dropper or you can use a drop-in bottle directly to top it up to the graduation mark in a drop-wise manner. So you have to be patient in this step. Don't over pour or otherwise you have to do it again. Now you notice that the bottom of the meniscus just touching the graduation mark. This is how we top up the water. So the final step, we will close the cap and then we gently invert it like this. We gently invert it to mix the solution well. Now you have a 10 times diluted solution. So this is the end of this video. Thank you.